Welcome to Cromer, North Norfolk, Cromer Railway Station. What am I doing here? Well, I'm travelling to Huck Van Holland over in the Netherlands um, via the Stenner Ferry tonight. And uh, I'm starting my journey from here because I have one of these. It is a rail and sail ticket bought via the Stenner website. And that's going to get me from here or any of the Greater Anglia network stations all the way to Harwich. Well, from Harwich, I'm going to take the boat and the cost, you will be amazed. I'll tell you what it is later on. I've got an overnight cabin as well on the boat, so we're going to check all that out. But I wanted to show you the journey from its origin here in Cromer. So here comes the train now. We'll get on board and I'll catch you in a bit. Okay guys, so I'm not going to dwell too much on the rail section of this journey, but if you're a foot passenger like I was, it is quite important to explain it in a little bit of detail here. Uh, named the Dutch Flyer, the combined rail and sail ticket bookable on the Stena Line website allows you to travel from any railway station on the Greater Anglian Network all the way down to Harwich for the ferry. Uh, London Liverpool Street is probably the most used station for this I would say, but I wanted to try it from one of the extremities of the TOC's area and I just happened to be in Cromer anyway. So although it necessitated two changes of train, first in Norwich and then again in Manningtree, I just showed my paper ticket to the train staff each time. They were obviously familiar with it and they just waved me through. Uh, note you cannot take a bicycle with you on this ticket. You need to pay for separate rail and ferry elements as per any normal individual booking. Well, before the you-know-what happened, these tickets also gave you onward travel anywhere in the Netherlands, using the RET Metro from Hoek van Holland into Schliedam or Rotterdam Alexander, and then mainline no, trains approaching. operated by no, the no, NS no. Dutch Railways to your destination. However, NS pulled out of the agreement at the time and have not yet resumed participation. So, uh, yeah, whilst that is exactly what I did do, it is not currently part of the Dutch Fly Affair, and I won't be covering it in this particular video. Mistly, um, <laughs> don't know why, other than I thought I'd get off here because I've got loads of time before the ferry tonight and I'm on the um, Harwich uh, line anyway. It's, it's only a couple of stops up the line um, to Harwich and I didn't want to go there yet because when I looked on Google Maps, Mistly looked like an interesting place because it's a short walk out of the station down to the quayside, I think. Um, so I'm just going to have a look at that for a bit. I'll catch you later. Yeah, actually, it uh, wasn't very interesting at all, to be honest. I'm not even sure if you're allowed to break your journey like this, but yeah, my advice, if you want somewhere to have a look around before the ferry, try somewhere else. Yeah, but it wasn't long before the port of Harwich came into view. Uh, this isn't our ship, by the way. It's the ex p Ferries European Ambassador, now the Stena Nordica. I'm not sure what it was doing over here, though. It's usually found on the west coast between UK and Ireland. Oh, right then, guys. Uh, Harwich... Um Harwich International Railway Station or the Harwich Ferry Terminal. I'm going to take the lift. It's just one of those days, isn't it? That's yeah, I'm very early. But I've just been talking to a really nice chap from Greater Anglia. He reckons that um, we could potentially be boarding the ship um, at 20, 30 hours or thereabouts, which is great, isn't it? Because. Go you know, closing. If I was Stenner, I would want passengers on there as early as possible so that the passengers spend their money on the ship and not anywhere else. And they don't want to be loaded up with dinner before they get on the ship. And that makes perfect sense to me. But I guess it depends what time, what time it comes in. So all we can do is, is see what happens. So I'll catch you in a little while. Yeah, actually, as a foot passenger arriving by train, this is exactly what you want, isn't it? A quick and easy access to the ferry terminal from the railway station. And what could be simpler? And it's all undercover too. So through the doors you enter this large departures hall. Arrivals are on the ground floor incidentally. Now there's plenty of seating available. Uh, a ticket reservation counter directly ahead of you. And to your left of that the entrance to departures and security. And to the left of that again is the Stena reception desk. Uh, which was manned by two very helpful and friendly members of staff. And then further to your left are the toilets and another seating area. As you can see, it was very quiet, but yeah, it was pretty early. 
and I used this area to, to get some work done whilst uh, I was waiting for everybody else to turn up. And note, there were no catering facilities available at the time of this video other than a couple of vending machines. So if you're hungry by this point, you're going to have to wait until you get on board. Now, talking of which, as you can see from the window view here, our ship had arrived, the Stella Hollandica, basking in the evening sun. Now I'll talk about her in a little while, but we were soon called through to departures, which was the usual put your bags through screening kind of thing and just wait in another area, where we were ultimately issued our boarding card, uh, which also doubled as the cabin key for the night. Now cabins are compulsory on overnight sailings, by the way. You must select one at the time of your booking. So with about two hours to departure, we were allowed through onto the passenger gangway and through a hole in the side of the ship on deck seven, where we were greeted by a crew member who helpfully ushered us into the waiting lift. I didn't need the lift, but I thought, well, why not? After all, I just walked half a mile down the world's longest footbridge. <laughs> but yeah, the lift took us up to deck nine, at which point I had to take the stairs the remaining way to my inside cabin, which tonight was located on deck 11. And again, I was helped by a friendly member of staff here. First impressions were very nice and very shiny everywhere, I thought, and nice and clean with plenty of assistance available if you need it. Good evening. Cabin number? 11110. Down there. Thank you very much. Thank you. Let's see if this works first time. It does. Wow. Oh, right guys, I'm not going to pretend I've walked into the cabin. <laughs> Everybody does that, including myself. Uh, but I am here in cabin 11110. Um, yeah, I'm pretty hungry though. I'll tell you what, it's um, it's 10 past 9 and uh, it's not dark yet, um, time of year and all that. So what I propose to do is show you guys a little bit of the deck space before I go and have something to eat. This is I suffer for my art, uh, but it's important that you guys see the outside before it gets dark and then I'll have dinner things I do see so yeah um, I'm just gonna um, yeah get ready for that and then I'll catch you outside in a bit Ooh, but, um, deck 9 we're just gonna try and find a way out onto the, um, the open deck space um, which is anybody's guess at the moment wait till the next door is closed Okay, so we are out on deck nine. Um, it's quite a nice deck. I have actually been on this boat before, I should uh, confess. Um, a few years back, before I started doing this. And it's quite a nice uh, open space. What we tended to get, and when I was on it last, was loads of this black stuff. Um, if you can see that. Which is coming down from the... Um, uh, Funnel. Is that the right word for it? I'm quite sure. Funnel. Uh, so yeah, it was like rain in this sort of stuff. Uh, I remember this as well. It's like an outside basketball court. Um, there's even a ball in it. And isn't it a beautiful evening? Yeah. Some, we've had some fantastic weather uh, the last few days in the UK. And. Uh, yeah, the sun's pretty much going down now, isn't it? And so, obscured a little bit by the haze, but you know, it's um, quarter past nine in the evening. I'm still standing out here with my t shirt on, looking forward to a beautiful calm crossing. Uh, I can't imagine it's going to be rough, but not in this weather. Uh, so, yeah, we'll have a little bit more of a look around the deck. I think we will try and head up to deck 10 and beyond. Let's see how we go. Such a beautiful evening, isn't it? Well, there's not much on deck 10. Should we go up to deck 11? Yeah. Uh, some nice um, benches here. One of the 
the things that I sometimes find on these ferries is that they might provide quite a bit of deck space, outside deck space, and there's hardly any seating. And not very nice seating at that either, but I think this is perfectly fine. And I even think we can get over there before the sun goes down. So let's head up some more stairs to what must be deck 12. Right, cancel that. <laughs> Obviously not. Okay, well, we'll, um, we'll shoot back into the other side of deck 11 anyway, because it is quite a nice evening, isn't it? And the best side of the ship is this side. Look at the size of that, guys. Massive, isn't it? Absolutely massive. And a beautiful sunset, even though you can't even see this. I think it looks beautiful. Right then guys, so I am in the restaurant um, in the front of the ship and I'm just going to show you what I bought myself for dinner and it's, yeah, it's very standard isn't it, it's, uh, it's a fish and chips kind of thing and a coke, right, um, £13.50 for the fish and chips, yeah okay, fine, the coke or any soft drink Four quid, that's that is just a rip off. Not too bad. Just had it by the way. I'll have another sip of the most expensive soft drink in the world ever. It's another twenty pence gone. Now these guys um just to my left are going into the taste plus lounge which I think you have to pay extra for that and I'm not sure, quite sure what they've, what they've got in there um, you know, maybe I'll have a look in it in a little while and just in front of me is the bar and I'll give you a little bit more of a look around yeah like I said um, I'll, I'll find out how much it costs to get in that um, taste plus and, and all the rest of it and I'll put the prices up at the end of the video but for me tonight I don't think it's worth it I'll try and get some sleep anyway I'll carry on eating this and I'll catch you in a bit right guys well yeah that wasn't bad standard sort of ship there fair wasn't it really um, I'm gonna have a bit more of a look around the ship um, this card incidentally it's like the the writing is so small on it I can barely make it out oh, I've got glasses on but yeah it's a, it's a real struggle it's a waste of time to be honest but I'm going to um, strap the camera onto my bag and we're going to have a bit of a wonder vein let's see if we find a quiet bar actually and um, yeah also is there any entertainment on tonight I know Guardians of the Galaxy starting at uh, 23.30 in the cinema if you want to go and buy a ticket. I'll try and find out what the price of that is for as well. Um, but yeah, I'm not, not sure there's anything else much. Um, but we'll go and have a look anyway and um, yeah, let's see what we can find. Right, so first of all, as promised, a quick look at the Taste Plus menu and restaurant area, which according to Stenner offers slow-paced and relaxed dining. Ah. Well anyway, two courses for 35 euros and 50 cents, or three courses for 41 euros and 50 cents. Uh, I guess some people thought it was worth escaping the presumably lightning fast and frenetic casual dining area, by Stenner's reckoning anyway. Uh, one of the four main courses was vegetarian, providing you like mushrooms. 
Awkwardly placed just outside that is a bar and plenty of table seating for all us casual diners, uh, some of which were able to get a nice view over the bow of the ship. In the starboard corner was a casino, although it was closed at the time of my visit. And down from that we have the Riva Bar, which looked quite nice I thought, almost elegant. And it was definitely the busiest of the bars on board. Behind that was Happy World. I had a quick look in, seeing as there were no kids around. And yeah, I'm sure it's a really nice, safe place you can leave your kids in while you're next door having a drink. Now, the casual dining area, which also served breakfast in the morning, had become much busier since I'd eaten, so I would advise getting in there as early as you can. I'm glad I ate when I did. Uh, passing the foot passenger disembarkation point on our left, we have the cinema here, a luggage storage room and a gaming machine area. The machines were all turned off, so like the casino, there must be some kind of gambling law in operation. And if you know the rules and regulations regarding this, then please let me know in the comments below. In the guest services area, there's a lovely model of the ship on display, which reminded me uh, that the Stena Hollandica is the sister ship of the Stena Britannica, and they've been operating on this route since 2010. Her capacity is 1,200 passengers and 230 cars, and she's timetabled to take between 7 and 8 hours approximately to complete this twice daily crossing, one overnight and one in the day. And maximum speed is about 22 knots. The Guardians of the Galaxy, by the way, was 8 euros 50 for adults, 7 euros for children, and 25 euros for a family ticket. Some further seating here opposite the shops, which I'm assumed opened in the morning and were fully open during the day crossing when the ship returns back to the UK. I had a quick wander into the truck driver's lounge before retreating back into the stairwell. I bet prices are much cheaper in here, but yeah, if you know, again, please let me know in the comments below. The exclusive Stena Plus lounge is located here. Now, upgrades according to Stena's website are available from £20, or they are free for premium fare paying passengers. However, a premium fares only seemed an option if you were travelling with a vehicle. So why not foot passengers too? Now, if I've got this wrong, please feel free to correct me. Otherwise, I'm assuming it may be possible to purchase the upgrade at guest services subject to availability. Now, I'd be interested to know here, though, why foot passengers are treated differently to vehicle passengers. Okay, and um, last of all, there is the Sea View Lounge here, uh, which seems really quiet for some reason. And then there's a quieter lounge area with a cafe bar before you reach the double door access back out onto the sun deck again. Right, so yeah, as you can see from, from the walk through there, everything really in terms of facilities, uh, restaurant, bar, lounge, uh, children's amenities, you know, it's all that sort of stuff, duty free shops, all that. And that's all on deck nine. And um, yeah, and, and also, it seems like you can only walk down the one side of deck nine as well um, so yeah I think it, it, it doesn't feel very spacious inside although the outside deck space is very good so yeah um, it doesn't look like there's much in in the way of entertainment I know it's mid-June um, but for a ship this size uh, on a route such as this, if I compare this to Brittany Ferries, Brittany Ferries would have lots going on. Um, but um, yeah, this, this is Stena, so, so it's a different thing, isn't it?
Well then guys, a quick cabin tour, two berth inside cabin, a standard hull hand ticker. Let's have a look. So yeah, we've got the top bunk here and the lower bunk, which is where I will be sleeping tonight. There is an individual reading light there, a climate control here. And uh, yeah, on the, um, on the side here, we have a comfortable seating area. A little table with a continental plug socket and a switch for the main light. Okay, I've just switched that off and it hasn't come back on again. Oh, it's some kind of strange switching system. Um, a round pitch pitcher of, I don't know, some rope on a some decking. Um, a TV, which is, I'll tell you what, this is quite good. I'm not really bothered about watching um, TV, but I do like this kind of thing. I really do. So that's the, um, the uh, I guess it's the nautical chart, isn't it? Uh, or something rep trying to represent it. And as you can see, we're, we're up here. And yeah, the channel that was just on is the um, is the, the ship, ship's camera. Um, and yeah, we're not really seeing much at the moment because it's uh, obviously it's dark outside. Let's pop that back on. Uh, yeah, so uh, moving on to the desk area, and I've put some of my rubbish. And we have a, a UK power socket and two Continental power sockets here. Some kind of old phone. And uh, what does that say? I haven't got my glasses on. Oh, some kind of yeah. Only use it in an emergency when I look a bit. Quite a big mirror here. Uh, a ladder for the top bunk and uh, yeah, a couple of plastic coat hangers. Bin underneath the table. Longer mirror here. Okay, should we have a look at the bathroom? Yes, of course. I've switched the wrong switch on again. That's the one. Uh, right, okay. <laughs> the bathroom. Oh, it's been a long day. <laughs> right, bathroom's okay, isn't it, really? Um, yeah, we've got a sink here, and uh, obviously uh, with some uh, soap just here. And a nice mirror, actually, with, with the light side, the side of it, and another bin underneath. And the shower, yeah, the shower's perfectly fine. Um, I had a shower really on, um, absolutely fine. And again, you've got um, soap and shampoo in the shower area. Toilet a little bit, um, a bit skimpy on the towels. Um, these towels are really thin. There was no um, floor mat, or whatever you call it. And there was no hand towel either. So, yeah, so, I, don't, I don't know why that is, but anyway. Um, yeah, so overall, um, yeah, a fairly, fairly standard um, cabin really isn't it um, with everything you need um, for the price that you pay and I'll tell you how much that is at the end of the video anyway I'm going to uh, get some shut eye now because we're docking um, probably about seven seven hours time something like that so I'll catch you in the morning and um, yeah I'll see you then okay so price I paid including the rail travel don't forget and an inside cabin was £106 and I think that's pretty good value for money considering you're getting your overnight accommodation with that too. Yeah, it was a lovely morning here in the Netherlands and as I walked around on deck I just took a minute or two to sum up the journey. Good morning guys from Hook Van Holland and yeah we're arriving pretty much on time due to come alongside at about 8 o'clock in the morning not a bad day here is it and yeah I didn't have a bad night's sleep either really quite comfortable nice wide bed I thought um, you know for a two berth cabin and so yeah overall yeah not too bad Stella uh, price wise uh, did the actual trip yeah pretty good and um, some of the prices of things in the bar and the restaurant are a little bit on the um, expensive side but uh, yeah there you go and uh, well hopefully 
this will give you this will give you an idea of uh, of what it's like uh, if you want to take this trip yourselves. I'm going to get ready now. We've got some stuff to pack, and um, yeah, they've called everybody out. The cabins, as per usual, uh, plenty of time to um, to hang around the, the lounge and wait for our call to disembark. Thank you very much for watching. If you like this video, please leave me a like and uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so. I will see you on another adventure soon. And as always, guys, cheers for now.